everyone welcome to aqua bloom boutique if you guys are new here you guys don't know who i am my name is z so welcome to my channel and if you guys haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you guys don't miss out on future videos or when i go on live anyways today i want to come on to show you guys a project that i'm working on so i have a friend that wanted an applique um, in border hen towel so we're gonna be in border on this hen towel so I will be in border on that and these towel came from Walmart if you guys are curious so it's the kitchen towel from Ming Stays that's the I think that's the Walmart brand so that's the tag so it comes for in a pack and she just I don't think they have any of the white plain one they have different colors one with the stripe like that so she wanted this design i made this design for a boy shirt so when i showed to her she uh she liked this little truck design to go with her fall decor and i'm sure you guys probably know who she is her name is naro martinez and she's also on youtube so if you guys don't um, know who she is you guys can go check out her youtube channel i think it's um called i think she named it after her name which is naro martinez so i will also link um her channel down below if you guys want to go check out um, what she do on her channel so we are going to be in border on this and i don't think this is a waffle towel but i think it could be applicated because I've seen a lot of people have applique on these. It just has a little bit texture. But I don't think this is this is not the waffle towel. Like if I'm gonna sell these, I will definitely just do like the waffle weave towel from Amazon. So you know you have a consistent uh, stock all the time from Amazon. Or if you live close to a, a Walmart, it, these are okay too, you know? These are okay. But Mostly I see people just do white because white look good with all design, right? So anyways, right now, let's just prepare our fabric. So what you would do is cut out the fabric to the size that you need. That's what I do. I don't know how other, I think other people just like cut up big piece of fabric and just use heat and bond but I like to cut it to the size of the design so I, I try to maximize the fabric use um, let me check so the design here is so I'm using this black for this part right here 3 inch by six and a half so it's three by six and a half let me try to line this up and then there's my large Okay, so we just cut that and then I will also cut the heating bond to this size. So my friend Naro, she want a set. I mean, it's good to do in a set. She didn't want any personalization or anything. 
So we're just doing the the car by itself. So that's it, you guys. I just cut that, and then I'm gonna go put heat them on them. I will show how I hoop it, and then we will start the embroidery. Hey everyone. So I'm not going to use my uh, mighty hoop. So I will be using this hoop right here. This is the hoop that came with my machine, and it's just a five by seven. So I marked my design. So I know that the design is four inches tall and seven inches wide. Um, I just marked the top, the top, the bottom, and then the two sides, so I can line up with the hoop. So since this is a pretty thick towel, I'm just going to be using a single sheet of tearaway. And then all I have to do is just place it over here, try my best to align it with the hoop. Like the hoop has a top, bottom, and the two sides. Um, axis here so you just have to line up with the mark that you make and you need to mark it with a water soluble pen so you don't ruin the project because you can just spray it with water and then iron it out this will be a little bit tricky this, this is my first time you guys so bear with me um, it's a little bit different than doing the shirt because I, the shirt I have the station maybe I should have bought the free arm because if I buy the free arm I can use my mighty hoop with this and probably will align it easier with the mighty hoop so I gotta pull this up a little bit so here I'm trying to Line it up with the so here's it's a little bit crooked over here. It's a little bit tricky because it's not lining right here. So I have to try to line it with the notch up here, down here, and the two side. Okay, there. I think this is lining up. Man, I pull, <laughs> I pull that side too much. Now I, guys, bear with me. It's my first time. I. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to with the shirt. Because I think I've been doing the shirt a lot of the time. So it's like, it's a little bit um, more easier for me with the shirt. Okay, there we go. I hoop it. So there we go. And all I have to do is just tighten this. I don't know what this tool is called, but this tool used to tighten this hoop up. That's all you gotta do. It's not coming off anymore. Um, I think I will use wall soluble once it start doing the satin stitch. So I'm gonna use um, this to check. I mean, it's not. It's not exact. You guys, it is not exact. 
but I got it pretty close so I think I should be fine with that it need to be screwed over it's not exact like this size uh, the dot need to go a little bit up and need to go that's the issue with this um, I don't know. I need to move this. Just have to kind of plate it. Play around a little bit. Just have to move it a little bit. There, that's perfect. Okay, now it's this is good. It's only by like a little bit off, just like a here. So I'm good with this. So I'm just gonna hope tighten this up again. So now let's go to the machine. And we'll be embordering that image out. And it will just be the thing like how I embordered the shirt. Okay? So all the uppercase step would just be the same. Anyways, I'll show you guys what I'm embordering and then the finished product. Hey everyone! So here we are at my embordered machine now. So let's put this on. So I think I've, I'm going to put it this way. And I have to adjust this because this hoop is a little bit smaller. I adjust this to my Mighty Hoop link. And it doesn't fit this one. So I have to adjust. And I, think I have to stitch this. Um, upside down because I want this to be hanging out so now I have to tighten this up and then what I'm going to do is I need to put on the camera so I can see where the design is. I have to rotate the design. So I think it's right on the center. Yep, I check. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't uh, tighten the hoop enough. I just, everything fell off. So I, I gotta re-hoop this, you guys. This is not what you're supposed to do. So yeah, I thought, um, thought I, oh my God, I didn't tighten it enough. It's just, it's still pretty loose. Yeah, that's, that's bad, you guys. This is why I like my Mighty Hoop more because it's a little bit, it was hard for me to tighten it. I think I didn't tighten it. So anyways, I'll come back. I have to rehoop this. Hey everyone. So I went back and <laughs> rehooped this and I put two um, tear away stabilizers instead of one to make it hold the um, towel better. And so now I was checking and this is hitting exactly the center of my center dot so i think it's good to go so i'm just gonna hit embroidery and then we're just going to hit go <laughs> and this is all my fabric over here i already prepped them so they're ready to go So 
So all you have to do now is just peel this heating bond back and then I press the this button where it pull up the arm so I can see where I need to place this and I'm going to be using my little wooden dowel here to uh, hold it down if you don't hold it down when the machine try to come down and do the tack down stitch this little piece of fabric could be shift or it could puckle up or it could bubble up so you won't have a clean finish if you don't try to like hold it down as flat as it needs to be and you would probably don't use your finger use like some kind of chopstick or wooden dowel like this to hold it down so I think I hear people say they use spatula too just so um, you hold everything down so nothing will be uh, bunching up when it's do the tuck down stitch so one is is done with that you can just take it off and if you have a hard time trying to trim it around here, then I would take off this and just put it on the table and try to trim it there. It'll be easier that way. So I gotta go find my scissor. So I'll show you um, me trimming it and then we'll, I'll do the next step. So now we're just going to trim this. I have to trim it because the next step will be the two pumpkin on the side. So if I don't trim this, then it will um, get caught because the pumpkin, the two pumpkin will be next to this one. So this is the back pumpkin. So I would suggest getting a, um, I don't like the little tiny orange applique scissor. I like this one because of the dip down like that. These are called applique scissor, curve applique scissor, and I have this also link in my description if you guys are looking for one that look like this because this is easier for you to cut around. If you get the little tiny scissor, I don't have that one, but it's like tiny like this, and then sometimes your hand like you don't want to cut around because of these little like the hoop you know so you can go over the hoop like this instead of trying to be like inside here fitting your hand through it and you can just maneuver like this and move your hoop around like that and you want to keep this as sharp as possible so you can cut your applique as clean as possible and I have I also have another one that I bought from All Stitch I have not tried this one yet but we'll try this one in another video so supposedly this one's supposed to be really really sharp <laughs> because it's you know Ganger they are a name brand scissor and they supposed supposedly to be super sharp so you can cut um, you applicate you applicate cleanly and nicely but this one's from Amazon this one um, do the job pretty well too i have not have any issue with it for i don't know a couple months now i bought this just this year and it still lasts me so and also you would need a lint roller because you don't want the you know any lint or any loose thread that you, after you cut it has all these like little residue from the fabric so you want to keep your era clean so when you heat press it you don't heat press anything that you didn't meant for it to be there you know <laughs> so and then i'll go and press this i'm not gonna press it now because i think i want to do all the applique first then i will press everything at once and then it'll just and then i'll just leave it alone on the machine so the machine can do its job and i will get back to that once i finish all the applique then i'll show you guys the final step of it do all the satin stitch, okay?
like and subscribe. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.